Voice and you are mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. Bring the voice and give a mighty shout of praise. Jesus. We glorify your holy name. Hallelujah. It's time to praise the Lord and we thank him for another opportunity. So I want to turn to your neighbor and tell him it's time to praise the Lord. It's time to praise Tell them it's time to praise the Lord. It's time to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you. Why don't you give Jesus a mighty shout of praise? Come on, give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. One, two. Come on, give Jesus a dance. Come on.
your struggles. Bye bye. Goodbye to your pain, yo. Bye bye. Goodbye to your weakness. Bye bye. Goodbye to your worries. Bye bye. Goodbye fear. Bye bye. You and the world come here. Bye bye. Goodbye pain. Bye bye. You and the world come here. Bye bye. Yeah, so long. 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 Bye bye. Goodbye to your struggles. Bye bye.
Ningetaka niweze kuchukua hii na nafasi kuwashukuru kikundi cha Praise and Worship kwa kutupeleka katika wakati wa kumwabudu Mungu. Tunashukuru Mungu wakati ambapo ametupatia fursa kuweza kuenda mbele zake kwa sifa na shukurani. Kwa hivyo ningetaka niweze kusema hili ni kanisa la Nairobi Christian Center uh, hapa Bahati uh, Bahati iko katika mitaa ya Eastlands mahala ambapo uh, kanisa ambapo limekuwa hapa kwa muda tunashukuru Bwana kwa nafasi ambao wametupa kuweza kuhudumia watu wa uh, pande hii ya mitaa ya Eastlands hii ni mitaa ya Bahati Maringo Jerusalem Jericho Isili na hata Mbotela na Shauri Moyo na Buruburu. Ninashukuru Bwana kwa yote. Ningetaka niweze kuwakaribisha katika ibada yetu siku ya leo. Karibuni sana majina yangu ni Reverend Frederick Gitahi, mchungaji um, hapa katika kanisa la Nairobi Christian Center. Leo ningetaka tuweze kuendelea na mafundisho yetu ambayo tumekuwa tukiangalia katika kitabu cha Waefeso Waefeso tulianza na sura ya kwanza tukaangalia vile Mungu anavyotunenea katika kitabu cha Waefeso sura ya kwanza tukatoka hapo tukaendelea sura ya pili na siku ya leo ningetaka tuweze kusoma sura ya tatu na kabla hatujasoma ningetaka tuweze uh, kuomba pamoja Baba katika jina la Yesu Mungu mwenye uwezo na mamlaka Yehova tunene kupitia neno lako Bwana. Neno lako la watuambia baba ni upanga ukatao na kuili Bwana. Wacha neno lako likaingia kilindini cha mioyo yetu Bwana. Mahala ambapo hakuna matumaini, mahala ambapo Bwana hakuna hakuna mwangaza, neno lako likaleta mwangaza Bwana. Walio wagonjwa kupitia neno lako tuombe uponyaji Bwana tupatie ufafanuo bwana wa neno lako bwana tukaweza kuelewa neno lako tufungua masikio yetu bwana na mioyo yetu tukasikia kutoka kwako katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye bwana na mkombozi tumeomba na kuamini amen ningetaka tuweze kufungua kitabu cha waefeso sura ya tatu. na tutaanzia mstari wa kwanza waefeso sura ya tatu tutaanzia mstari wa kwanza maandiko inasema nitasoma kwa Kiingereza for this reason i paul the prisoner of christ jesus for the gentiles if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which was given to me for you verse number 3 how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as i have briefly written already by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse number 5 which in the other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it was it was it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostle and prophet and we uh, tutaweza kuruka tuende mstari wa 14 mstari wa 14 unasema hivi for this reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with mighty through his spirit in the inner man verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge 
that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse number 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in church by Christ Jesus to all generation forever and ever. Amen. Ningetaka tuweze kuangalia ni nini ambacho Paulo anatunenea mahala hapa ambapo tumesoma katika sura ya tatu. Ningetaka ni waze kusema kuna mambo mawili ambayo yanajitokeza vizuri sana katika uh, sura ya tatu. Jambo la kwanza ambalo ningetaka kulileta uh, Paul uh, reveals the mystery that was hidden and kept secret uh, for many many ages. Paulo anatuonesha jambo ambalo lilikuwa lime limefichwa ambalo ambalo wengi hawangeweza kulijua ama hawakuweza kulijua kwa miaka mingi na jambo la pili ambalo tunaona hapa Paul talks about the grace that God gave him to preach to the Gentiles uh, about the unsearchable riches in Christ. Paulo anatunenea kuhusu neema ambayo Mungu alimweza kumpa ili akaweza kufikia watu ambao wa, tunawaita watu wa kimataifa watu ambao hawakuwa wame, wamehesabiwa uh, kati ama kama uh, vile ambavyo tulisema wa, wa Yahudi walikuwa wametengwa kama hao ndio watu wa Mungu na kuna wengine wote tuliehesabiwa kama watu ambao ni wa kimataifa ambao hawakuwa na sehemu katika uh, ufalme ufalme wa Mungu kwa hivyo Paulo ame, ameitwa anasema kwa neema ya Mungu ameitwa ili akaweza kuwafikia watu wa kimataifa na neno la Mungu na ku kushiriki uh, wema wa Mungu na utajiri ambao Mungu ametuwekea kupitia mwanao Yesu Kristo. Kwa hivyo mahala hapa katika sura ya tatu, kuna mambo ambayo tutaenda kuangalia tunaona vile ambavyo Paulo anasema hivi na niseme kwa Kiingereza anaanza kwa kusema Paul begins chapter 3 by stating that for this reason referring to what he had been saying in chapter 1 and in chapter 2 of the book of uh, of Ephesians kwa hivyo anaanza kwa kutujulisha mambo ambayo amekuwa akifundisha katika sura ya kwanza na hata sura ya pili katika sura ya kwanza tunaona Paulo alinena kuhusu utajiri ambao walio itwa na Mwana iwe ni wale ambao ni Wayahudi ama ni wale ambao ni wa kimataifa ama wa Yunani ambao wote ambao wameitwa na Mwana kuna utajiri ambao Mungu amewawekea katika in the heavenly realm kuna utajiri ambao Mungu amewekea wale ambao amewaita kwa imani na kwa kwa neema jambo la pili tuliona kuwa Paulo uh, Paul prays for the Ephesians that they may uh, comprehend fully the extent of God's love waweze kujua kwa kweli kwa ukamilifu kuhusu upendo wa Mungu kwa hivyo katika sura ya kwanza tunaona mambo mawili ya muhimu sana ambayo nimeyataja mahala pale sura ya pili Tunaingia tunaona Paulo anaanza kwa kunenea uh, hili kanisa la Efeso. So Paul talks to the Ephesians church that they were dead in sin, dead in transgression, but through the grace of God and through faith in God that God has made them alive. Walikuwa wame kufa kabisa katika dhambi wamekufa kabisa katika matendo lakini tunaona kupitia neema ya Mungu na imani katika Mungu tunaona Mungu akaweza kuwaweka hai hai tena jambo la pili ambalo tunaangalia mahali hapa that uh, they are before life they were strangers they were alienated from God's covenant of or covenant of, of promises walikuwa wame 
tengwa na ahadi za Mungu ahadi za Mungu ambazo tunaweza sema ni ahadi za umilele kwa hivyo maisha ha, hapo awali hawa wapendwa walikuwa wametengwa na ahadi za Mungu ambazo ni za kweli na ni za za umilele hata anaendelea kusema that hapo awali hawa waefeso walikuwa ni watu ambao hawakuwa na matumaini walikuwa ni watu ambao walikuwa mbali na Mungu maisha yao ya awali walikuwa hawana matumaini na walikuwa mbali na Mungu. Jambo lingine ambalo Paulo anaangalia mahala hapa ni kuwa Mungu ilibidi akate ile pazia, akate ile separation uh, iliyokuwa mahala pale. Na sasa tunaona wakati ambapo tunavyoishi, Yesu akasema kuwa yote imeisha ile ambayo ilikuwa pazia ambayo ilikuwa ina, 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 inafanya watu wasiweze kupatana na Mungu maandiko inasema Yesu akasema imetolewa pazia imetolewa ime, ime kwa hivyo we can see that uh, now God has already broken the wall that was standing before uh, uh, his people and him we can see that there is no that veil that was there that today either gentiles or or, or 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 the jews we are able to access the, the holy of holies we are able to access god's holiest place na si lazima tupitie kupitia yeyote mungu ametupatia laini he has given us an access line to him tunaweza ena mbele za mungu wakati wowote na tukaweza kufikia mungu wakati wowote si lazima tuweze kupitia mtu yoyote ili tuweze kufikia mungu mungu ameondoa ile pazia mungu ameondoa kile kizuilizi ambacho kiliko kuwa pale kwa kuwa ni watu fulani ambao waliokuwa na uwezo wa kwenda mbele za mungu hawa wengine wote ilibidi tu kupitia kupitia makuhani wakuu lakini siku ya leo Mungu ameondoa hiyo pazia kuwa tunaweza enda mbele za Mungu wakati wowote mahala popote kwa kuwa hiyo pazia haiko tuko na nafasi hata nyumbani ya kwenda mbele za Mungu jameni kwa hivyo hata ukiwa nyumbani wenda ikawa hatuna nafasi ya kuja kanisani lakini mahala ambapo uko uko na uwezo uko na ile access ya kuweza kwenda mbele za Mungu kwa maombi na wakati tunapoenda mbele za Mungu kwa maombi wacha niseme kuwa Mungu anasikia maombi yako haijalishi ni saa ngapi iwe ni usiku na mchana unaweza kumfikia kumfikia Mungu jameni si huyu Mungu ametupatia baraka mingi kuona kuwa tunaweza enda mbele zake mahala popote na wakati wakati wowote Jambo la pili ambalo Paulo analo tu, tu, tunenea mahala hapa is that through Paul Uh, that though Paul was arrested by the Roman government but Paul refers his, himself as a prisoner of, as a prisoner of Christ for the sake of the Gentiles Paulo alikuwa ame, amefungwa na serikali ya Warumi lakini Paulo anasema yeye ni mfungwa wa Yesu na si mfungwa wa serikali yoyote. Jamini kuna mambo ambayo Paulo anayotazama hapa anaposema yeye si mfungwa wa mtu yoyote. Yeye si mfungwa ya kitu yoyote. Yeye ni mfungwa wa Yesu Kristo. So Paul knew that he was a prisoner under God God's control and not under uh, the Roman control. Yeye ni mfungwa aliye chini ya utawala wa Mungu na si chini ya utawala wa serikali yoyote. Jameni Paulo ni mtu ambaye anatufungua macho yetu ya kiroho ili tukaweza kutazama mambo ambayo tunapitia. Tuikaitazama na mtazamo tofauti tofauti. Ijapokuwa alikuwa amefungwa na, na serikali ya Warumi, lakini Paulo kwa mtazamo wake anatupa mtazamo wa kiroho anasema yeye hayuko chini ya serikali hajafungwa na serikali ya Warumi lakini ame yuko chini ya utawala wa Yesu Kristo kwa hivyo Paulo anatuonesha kuna njia uh, tofauti ya kuangalia mambo hata wakati tunapopitia changamoto jameni tusijione ni kama tu, tuko chini ya zile changamoto tujione ni kama watu ambao wako chini ya wingu la neema ya Mungu na wakati uko chini ya wingu la neema ya Mungu. Mambo yanaweza kuja hata magumu, mambo yanaweza kuja hata yawe ni challenging, lakini ukiwa chini ya neema ya Mungu, wewe ni zaidi ya mshindi. So Paul 
he regards himself as a as a prisoner as a prisoner of god and uh, his imprisonment is under the will of god and that's why paul does not mama paul does not complain yani paulo yeye hanuguniki kwa sababu anajua yuko chini ya utawala wa Mungu ijapokuwa ako chini ya amefungwa na Warumi ijapokuwa amerushwa korokoroni na Warumi lakini Paulo anajua kuwa yuko chini ya kusudi la Mungu mtu ambaye anayejua kuwa yuko kusudi la Mungu yeye ha, 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 babaiki yeye hatetemeki yeye hanuguniki kwa sababu anajua maisha yake imeshikiliwa na Mungu anajua hakuna serikali yote hakuna binadamu yote ambaye ana uwezo ya kumaliza maisha mtu ya mtu ambaye yuko chini ya utawala wa Mungu jameni kwa hivyo Paulo hawezi nuguni nika anajua yuko chini ya wingu la neema ya Mungu na ukiwa chini ya wingu la neema ya Mungu unapitia mambo lakini neema ya Mungu inakutosha so paul he knew that uh, his responsibility was to share god's grace to all people alijua kusudi lake wakati ambapo mungu amempa na ndipo sasa alipoishi alijua ijapokuwa amefungwa korokoroni lakini wakati alipopata nafasi alijua kusudi lake ni ili akaweza kushiriki neno la mungu na wengi na ndipo sasa wa kristo ni lazima tuweze kujua kusudi letu kusudi letu katika ulimwenguni si ili tu kuishi tu kula na kuamka kusudi letu ni ili tukaweza kushiriki neno la Mungu na watu wengi wasio juana na Mungu wakaweza kujuana na Mungu wasio na matumaini tukaweza kushiriki neno la Mungu neno ambalo linaloleta matumaini kwa watu wengi kwa ulimwengu wote jameni kuna kitu ambacho wa Kristo Mungu ametupatia ambacho hakiko na watu wengine wowote Mungu ametupatia kitu cha dhamana sana kitu ambacho ulimwengu unatafuta usi kuna mchana hii ni ile ambao Mungu ameweka kuwa tunaweza shiriki hili neno na hili neno linaleta matumaini kwa watu wengi kwa hivyo Paulo alijua kusudi lake ni ili ya kuishi ni ili aweze kushiriki neno la Mungu na kila mtu jameni tuko na kusudi ambalo Mungu ametupatia wakati huu ili tukaweza kushiriki neno la Mungu na watu wengi. Paulo anaendelea na sema Paul's reality is that he was in prison but the way Paul uh, structures his conversation or his talk the way Paul sounds is like somebody who is not in prison. He does not smell the smell of prison. Yaani ninasema nini? Paulo ukiangalia vile ambavyo anavyoandika hii, hai maandiko. Kama sura ya mstari wa 14 Paulo anasema that for this reason I bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom all the whole family in earth is named or derive its name from so paulo anaandika ijapokuwa yuko korokoroni ijapokuwa amefungwa lakini anaandika maandiko haya si kama mtu ambaye amefungwa ni kama mtu ambaye yuko huru kwa hivyo ukiangalia vile ambavyo paulo anaandika haya maandiko paulo anaandika haya maandiko na matumaini mengi jameni Haandiki kama mtu ambaye yuko na uoga, mtu ambaye yuko korokoroni. Na ukiangalia vile ambavyo ameandika, haandiki hata kama mtu ambaye uh, ananukia uh, ile 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 mnuko ama arufu ya ya, 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 ya ya jela ama ya korokoroni. Jameni unaona ni mtu ambaye anaandika kama mtu ambaye yuko huru. Hana wasi wa wasi wowote kwa sababu anajua hakuna yote ambaye yuko na uwezo wa kumaliza maisha yake japo kama Mungu hajaandika na akasema hii ndio siku yake ya mwisho Paulo alijua hakuna binadamu yoyote hakuna kiongozi yoyote aliye na mamlaka ya kumaliza maisha yake kwa hivyo anaandika kwa njia ambayo hauwezi dhania kuwa Paulo alikuwa alikuwa korokoroni jameni in life we can go through many experiences but they don't affect us when we know our position in god wa 
wakati katika maisha tunaweza pitia changamoto mingi lakini hizi changamoto wanaojuana na Mungu haziwezi kuwashusha haziwezi kuwaleta 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 chini Daudi akapitia mambo mengi wakati mmoja akakuta jamii yake akakuta mahali ambapo walikuwa wamewaacha akakuta kumechomwa nyumba zao zote zimechomwa wake wao na watoto wao wamechukuliwa wametekwa mateka ma, 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 ma lakini maandiko inasema na hawa wengine wote waliokuwa karibu na Daudi wakataka kumpiga na kumaliza kumuua lakini maandiko inasema Daudi akajitia nguvu mbele za Bwana akajitia nguvu mbele za Bwana wanaojuana na Mungu wanaojua hao ni nani mbele za Mungu hao hawashushiki moyo hao hawakufi moyo hao wanajua kuna yule ambaye anayewashughulikia usiku na mchana Atu, atulindae yeye hasinzii wala halali kamwe kwa hivyo Paulo alijua anayemlinda hasinzii wala halali kamwe na hii ndio uzuri wa kuweza kujuana na Mungu huu ndio uzuri wa kuweza kujua yule ambaye tunayemtumaini yule ambaye ametuita kwa neema yake na akatuleta katika jamii yake yeye ni Mungu aliye na nguvu na uwezo na mamlaka na ndipo sasa Paulo anatuonesha uzuri wa kuangalia mambo ama hali katika hali ya kiroho wakati mwingi tunaangalia a situation we 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 we, we, we perceive a situation from a, a carnal a carnal way we perceive a situation from a physical way lakini Paulo anatuonesha uzuri wa kuangalia hali katika hali ya kiroho jameni wanaoangalia mambo katika hali ya kiroho yaje magumu namna gani yaje magonjwa magani iitwe majina magani iwe ni corona iwe ni hiv iwe ni ebola wanaojuana na Mungu wanaoangalia mambo katika hali ya kiroho hao hawakufi moyo hao wanajua kunaye aliye juu mbinguni aliye na nguvu na uwezo na mamlaka wa kutenda yasiyowezekana na uwezo wa binadamu na huyu ndiye Mungu ambaye tunayemhubiri huyu ndiye Mungu ambaye tunamtumaini huyu ndiye Mungu ambaye yuko pamoja nasi huyu ndiye Mungu anayetupigania vita huyu ndiye Mungu aliye karibu na yuko karibu na watu wake kwa hivyo tunapoendelea tunaangalia katika katika kitabu cha, cha, cha wakorintho wa pili Paulo anaandika maneno mengine ambayo eh, yanatia moyo maneno mengine ambayo ukiangalia maisha ya Paulo ukiangalia vile ambavyo anaandika anaandika katika hali ya kiroho na watu ambao wanaandika wakiwa katika roho jameni wanaandika maneno ambayo ni ya kuinua wakorintho wa pili mstari wa, wa nne na uh, chapter 4 second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 paulo anaandika hivi anasema hivi nitasoma na kiingereza paul says that we are we are these treasures in clay of in jars of clay to show that this is all surpassing power is from god and not from us anaendelea kuandika na anasema hivi we are hardly pressed on every side tunafinyiliwa katika kila pande anaendelea kusema we are crushed but not perplexed in despair but we don't give up persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destro- destroyed always carrying around in our bodies the death of our lord jesus christ tunafinyika kwa njia zote tunagandamizwa tunapitia mambo mazito lakini hatukufi moyo walio juana na mungu walio leto karibu na mungu walio oshwa na damu ya yesu hao hawavunjiki moyo hao wanafinyika na mambo mengi lakini wanazidi kujipa matumaini mbele za bwana wanazidi kujipa nguvu mbele za bwana hawa kufi moyo wanajua tumebeba hii mwili lakini ni mwili ya kifo lakini hatimaye tutapokea uzima wa milele na hiyo ndio ahadi ambao Mungu ametupa kama walioitwa waliokombolewa na damu ya Yesu so uh, paulo yeye even though uh, paul considers himself as a prisoner but he does not consider himself a prisoner of the roman government but a prisoner of christ and you see the way by 
Paul looks at the situation and sees the best. He looked, he sees the best in every situation. Anapoangalia hali, Paulo anaangalia uzuri wa hiyo hali. Aangali mabaya yaliyo katika hiyo hali. Anaangalia uzuri wa kila kitu jamini. Kama wa Kristo ni lazima tufike mahali ambapo. Bana kuangalia mabaya jamini. Wakati mwingi we have been conditioned to look at what is what is wrong in a place. Wakati mwingi tumekuwa condition kuangalia mabaya yaliyo katika katika jamii zetu, yaliyo katika nchi yetu, yaliyo katika hata makazi sani, hata mahali ambapo tunafanya kazi, utaangalia wengi wetu tunaangaliaga tu makosa, lakini tunaangalia maisha ya Paulo na tunaona Paulo yeye si mtu wa kuangalia makosa, yeye si mtu wa kuangalia mabaya. Paulo anaenda zidi ya kuangalia mabaya na anaangalia wema wa Bwana, anaangalia ukuu wa Bwana. He does not concentrate on the bad or the evil that is there or the wickedness that is there or the weakness that is there. But Paul concentrates on looking at the best in every situation. Wana sifiwe, ni lazima tufike mahali, tuanze kuangalia wema kuliko kuangalia ubaya, ubaya wakitu. Maandiko inasema that uh, knowing that all things God works together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Mambo yote yatendeka kwa wema kwa wale ambao wanaompenda Mungu na wale ambao wameitanishwa wame kulingana na kusudi la Bwana. That is in the book of Romans chapter number 8 verse number 28. Warumi nane uh, sura, sura ya nane mstari wa 28. Na, na Paulo anasema mambo yote yatendeka yatendeka kwa wema. So Paul is the kind of person who looks at the opportunity. Anaangalia ni lini ambalo nitapata nafasi ya kutenda wema wa Bwana. Ni lini ambalo nitapata nafasi ili niweze kuhubiria wengi, ili niweze kupatia wengi neno la Mungu ambalo linaloleta linaloleta matumaini. Kwa hivyo Paulo anaangalia nafasi. Mungu nipe nafasi. Nipe nafasi nikaweza kushiriki wema wako. Nipe nafasi nikaweza kufikia wengi na neno la tumaini. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Tunapoangalia angalia Paulo, tunaona that Paul chooses to be a prisoner of Christ rather than being a prisoner of any any government. He chooses to be a prisoner of Christ. He chooses to be a prisoner of Christ rather be the, rather than being a prisoner of any system he chooses to be a prisoner of Christ rather than being a prisoner of any man he chooses to be a prisoner of Christ rather than being than being a prisoner of anything and this is a choice life is a choice you choose who to serve hallelujah wakati mwingi wapendwa tunajipata mahali ambapo tunachagua kutumikia binadamu eh, kuliko kutumikia Mungu. Kwa hivyo Paulo tunaona yeye katika moyo wake anaweka amri, anaweka eh, shauku ndani ya moyo wake, shauku ya kuweza kutumikia Mungu na anaweka shauku ya kutumikia Mungu kuliko kutumikia binadamu. Wakati watu wengi tume, tumejipata mahali ambapo japokuwa tuna taka kutumikia Mungu lakini tunajipata wakati ambapo tunatumikia serikali kuliko kutumikia Mungu wakati mwingine tunatumikia walio tuajiri kuliko kutumikia Mungu wakati mwingine tunajipata tunatumikia marafiki zetu kuliko kutumikia Mungu tunatumikia pesa zetu kuliko kutumikia Mungu tunatumikia mambo mengine tofauti tofauti kuliko kutumikia Mungu so Paulo anasema yeye ameweka mkataba na Mungu na akasema Kusudi lake la maisha ni ili akaweza kutumikia Mungu na akaweza kumpendeza Mungu. So his heart is conditioned to serve God and not to serve any man or to serve any system or to serve any government. He's, he has conditioned his heart that he may be able to serve God than serving any man. Na wanao tumikia Mungu kuna baraka mingi maandiko inasema kulaaniwa ni yote awekae tumaini lake kwa midadamu kulaaniwa ni yote awekae tumaini lake kwa kiongozi wowote kulaaniwa ni yote awekae tumaini lake kwa kwa inchi yoyote ama serikali yoyote 
kwa na kubarikiwa ni kwa wale ambao wawekao tumaini lao kwa Mungu mpendo waweka tumaini lako kwa Mungu tunapoweka tumaini yetu kwa Mungu kuna baraka nyingi ambazo Mungu amewekea wale ambao wanaoweka tumaini zao kwake. Kwa hivyo Paulo anasema yeye amechagua, ameweka mkataba na Mungu, moyo wake utamtumikia Mungu na hautatumikia binadamu yoyote ama hautatumikia uh, jambo lolote ambalo linalojiinua kinyume na kusudi na kusudi la Mungu. So Paul is saying that he has condition his heart. Paul knows that when God speaks to any earthly system or any earthly government or any leader when God speak there is no one that can hold you hostage when God has spoken wakati Mungu amenena neno lake ni kweli na amina hakuna kiongozi yoyote hakuna serikali yoyote hakuna binadamu yoyote wakati ambapo Mungu amenena hakuna yoyote hata aende kinyume na Mungu wacha ni kuambia Mungu akinena neno lake ni lazima litimize kile ambacho Mungu amenena kwa hivyo Paulo anajua neno la Mungu it is the final word it is the it has the final authority the final say neno la Mungu linakuja na nguvu na uwezo na mamlaka hakuna binadamu yoyote hakuna kiongozi yoyote ambaye wakati Mungu amenena Mungu akinena amenena kwa hivyo Paulo anajua neno la Mungu Mungu anaponena neno lake viongozi wote wananyekea mbele za Mungu kwa sababu maisha ya viongozi ni ya muda maisha ya wanadamu ni ya muda maisha ya serikali yoyote ni ya muda lakini Mungu anaponena neno lake ni la umilele na kila kiongozi ana, ananyenyekea mbele la neno la Mungu ambalo Mungu amenena Paulo anajua siri iko hapa wakati ambapo Mungu ananena neno lake it is the final say no matter what any other person has said god's word is a final say paul knows that his life is not in the hands of a, the roman government maisha yake haiko katika mikono ya serikali ya warumi lakini alijua maisha yake iko katika mikono ya mungu mbiposa akasema yeye ni mfungwa wa yesu na si mfungwa wa binadamu yoyote jamini katika kitabu cha uh, revelation ama revelation kitabu cha revelation maandiko inasema uh, katika kitabu cha revelation now to the angel of the church in philadelphia right he who is holy he who is true he who holds the key of david he who opens and no man can shut and when he shuts no one can open anaandikia Uh, uh, Yohana akaandikia kanisa la Philadelphia akaandika akasema kunaye yule ambaye aliye mtakatifu kunaye yule ambaye neno lake ni la kweli kunaye yule ambaye aliye na funguo ya Daudi na kunaye yule ambaye akifungua mlango hakuna mwanadamu yote ambaye anaweza funga na akifunga hakuna mwanadamu yoyote aliye na uwezo wa kufungua tumikia huyo ambaye aliye na uwezo wa kufungua mlango na akifungua hakuna yote ambaye anaweza funga akikufungulia mlango iwe ni kazini kwako akikufungulia mlango siku ya leo hakuna binadamu aliye na uwezo wa kufunga na akifunga hakuna binadamu aliye na uwezo wa kufungua paulo anaendelea kukusema that i am a prisoner of christ and not a prisoner of any earthly or worldly pleasures yeye ni mfungwa wa Yesu. Unajua kuna watu ambao katika miaka ambayo na wakati ambao nyakati ambazo tunazoishi, kuna watu ambao wamekuwa wafungwa wa raha za dunia. Hawawezi kaa bila raha za dunia. Paulo anasema yeye si mfungwa wa raha za wa raha za dunia. Yeye anasema yeye ni mfungwa wa Yesu. Anasema yeye si mfungwa hata wa mawazo maovu na machafu. Anasema yeye ni mfungwa wa Yesu. Yeye Paulo anaendelea kusema yeye si mfungwa wa jambo lolote. 
Yeye ni mfungu wa Yesu. Jameni juzi tuliweza kuona uh, vijana ambao ni wachanga jameni, watu ambao wamefungwa na anasa na raha za dunia, wanafanya even the decision they make, they make irrational decisions, they make uh, uh, decisions that are not pleasing, uh, wanaweka uh, mawazo yao na uh, zile uh, decisions ambazo wanazo wanazo fanya waamuzi ambao wanaofanya si waamuzi wa busara bali ni waamuzi wa kupotosha juzi tuliona vijana wachache sana serikali imeweka kafiu na ikasema mtu wafai kutoka nje jioni lakini juzi tuliona vijana wachache eh, kwa sababu wamefungwa na ulevi wamefungwa na anasa na raha wakaenda na wakaenda wakaweza kuendelea na anasa zao na ulevi wao jameni wakati ulipofika tukaona wakati wa uh, wamechelewa saa za kafiu zimefika hao vijana tunaona waka moja akapiga simu na wakatumiwa ambulance jameni ukiangalia jameni mahala ambapo wakati ambapo tunaishi waliofungwa na roho ya nasa jameni hata waamuzi wanaofanya ni waamuzi ambao ni wakuwamaliza na kuwapotosha when all is said and done the young men who are who did that they had to be taken for quarantine kitu ambacho wangekuwa wamefanya waamuzi mzuri hawajeweza kujipata mahala pale wakati watu ni wafungwa wa jambo lolote hatimaye hilo jambo linawamaliza badala ya kuwafanya kuwa bora katika maisha kwa hivyo usiwe mfungwa wa nasa usiwe mfungwa wa, wa, wa ulevi usiwe mfungwa wa jambo lolote ni heri ni bora kuwa mfungwa wa Yesu Kristo ni bora kuwa mfungwa wa neno la Mungu ni bora kuwa mfungwa wa, wa amani na wema wa Mungu ni bora kuwa mfungwa wa neno la Mungu na neema ya Mungu jamii. Paulo anasema yeye ni mfungwa wa Yesu Kristo na si mfungwa wa binadamu yoyote. Sa watu wengine ni wafungwa hata wa chakula. Watu ambao hawezi ishi bila hata kukula. Kila wakati wanakula wanafagia yoyote jameni. Jameni tusiwe wafungwa wa mambo yoyote. Tuwe wafungwa wa Yesu Kristo. Kuna watu ambao wamekuwa wafungwa they have been imprisoned by other people. There are people who have been imprisoned by other people. They cannot do anything. Whatever they do is to please the others wamekuwa wafungwa wa watu wengine yeye hawezi fanya mambo kivyake chochote anachofanya ni lazima afanye ili ampendeze mtu mwingine paulo anasema mimi si mfungwa wa, 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 wa mtu yoyote bali mimi ni mfungwa wa Yesu Kristo ni vizuri kuwa wafungwa wa Yesu Kristo wakati mwingi wengine wanafanya mambo ili waweze kuwafurahisha kuwafurahisha viongozi wengine wanafanya mambo ili waweze kuwafurahisha uh, binadamu ama marafiki na wakati mwingi tunajipata kwa shida lakini ukiwa mfungo wa Yesu Kristo kuna amani kuna uzima na kuna baraka walio jua hao ni wafungwa na wakubali kuisha maisha kama wafungwa wa Yesu Kristo. Jambo lingine ambalo ningetaka niweze kuambia hapa ni kuwa Paulo anasema kuhusu the mystery, the mystery that Paul talks about. Hii ni uh, ni lile jambo ambalo kuwa wa Wayahudi wa, wa na Wayunani wame wameletwa pamoja kama mwili wa Yesu. Na hili ndilo jambo ambalo anasema that all of us are equal partakers of God's divine promise sisi wote ni, ni, ni tume, tumewekwa kama uh, hakuna yote ambaye yuko juu ya mwingine wa Yahudi na wa Yunani sisi wote Mungu ametupatia nafasi ya kuweza kushiriki baraka zake Bwana sifiwe jambo lingine is that uh, tunaweza we can be able to emulate Paul that we, we we should not make excuses Paul was in prison but he did not make excuses. Yeye hakutoa visababu. Alikuwa katika jela lakini hakutoa visababu. Hakusema yeye hawezi. In fact, no matter where you are in life, there is no excuses. No matter what position you hold, no matter what status you hold in the society there is no excuses. We can be able to do something for God. Tunaweza fanyia Mungu uh, jambo. 
Hallelujah. We can be able to do much for God. We can be able to go beyond and do uh, beyond uh, our ability and beyond our strength. Uh, the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And the last one is that Paul prays for the Ephesians. And now Mbea Kanisa la Ephesians. So what Paul says is that I bow down my knees in prayer uh, before God that may, may, that may God give you uh, something that is beyond knowledge. And Paul continues to pray. His prayer was that they may be filled with all the fullness of God. Uh, he did not pray celebrities my prayer to the church is that may God fill every member of our church every person who comes to this church may God fill you with his fullness may our desire be the desire to attract God and not to attract any other thing or not to attract any other man kusudi letu liwe ni la kumpendeza Mungu kusudi letu liwe ni la kujaza na wema wa Bwana katika jina la Yesu baba katika jina la Yesu wacha wema wako baba ukajaza wote ambao umeleta katika hili kanisa la Nairobi Christian Center Bwana wote ambao umewatenga baba na umewaleta karibu nawe Bwana umewaokoa Yehova na umewaleta katika nyumba yako ombi langu kama mchungaji wao wacha baba Baba wema wako ukawajaza Bwana. Wacha neema yako uka, uka, ikawajaza Bwana. Yehova ukawajazilia na wema wako Bwana. Katika jina la Yesu wakakujua zaidi, wakakujua zaidi na zaidi. Ninawaweka baba mikononi mwako. Yehova hata wakati huu tunapopitia changamoto, ninawazingira na damu ya Yesu. Baba hawatapokea mabaya, hawatakokea maovu Bwana. Baba neema yako itawatosha Bwana. Utawaangazia na jua la neema Baba. Wape ushindi katika kila jambo katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba na kuamini. Amen. Ningetaka niweze kuomba na wale ambao wanasema mchungaji ningetaka kuchukua hii nafasi kutoa maisha yangu kwa Bwana. Huyu Mungu ningetaka niweze kujuana kujuana na yeye. Ningetaka maisha yangu yawe ni maisha ambayo yanaleta uh, yanaleta uh, utukufu kwa Mungu. Kwa hivyo ningetaka kuomba na wewe popote ulipo, ningetaka ufanye hili ombi sema Bwana Yesu, Mwana Yesu, na jambele zako na kiri dhambi zangu nifanye siku ya leo kuwa mwana wako. Baba katika jina la Yesu. Amina. Wewe ambao umeomba, umeokoka, umejuana na Mungu na nitazidi kukuombea, Mungu azidi kukubariki na kutendea mema. Amina. Amen. Nikitaka niweze kuchukua hii nafasi uweza kuomba na wale ambao wakati huu tunaenda kutoa zaka na sadaka na ninajua ni nafasi ambao Mungu ametupatia. Tulisema Paulo alisema ukipata kila nafasi tenda wema wa Mungu. Tenda especially katika nyumba ya Mungu. Kwa hivyo nafasi ambao Mungu ametupatia kuweza kufanya matoleo yetu ya zaka na sadaka, ningetaka tuchukue hii nafasi kuweza kumtolea Bwana. Kwa hivyo popote ulipo kuna namba ya, ya pebi namba inayopitia katika katika runinga yako ama simu yako, ningetaka uchukue hii nafasi ukaweza kutoa kupitia hiyo namba na hizo pesa zitaweza uh, kufikia katika account ya kanisa kuna hata bank account iliyo hapo unaweza tumia hiyo bank account uweza kutoa matoleo yako iwe ni zaka ni sadaka bwana wabariki wacha niweze kukuombea unaposhika hiyo zaka yako na sadaka yako tunapotolea bwana bwana katika jina la Yesu baba unayobariki watu wako bariki wote waliochukua hii nafasi na fursa kuweza kukutolea bwana bariki kazi za mikono yao bwana Waangazie na jua la neema baba wape ushindi bwana wakabarikiwa wanapoingia wakabarikiwa wanapotoka ukawaangazie na jua la neema baba wasishindwe na jambo lolote bwana neema yako ikawa 
atoshe sasa na hata milele katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye Bwana na mkombozi wetu tumeomba na kuamini amen Bwana awabariki Bwana wapende Bwana watendee mema na wape wiki nzuri wiki ya ushindi wiki ya amani na wiki ya baraka tunapo uh, zidi kutoa tutabarikiwa na wimbo na najua Mungu atawabariki zaidi asante